Hello everyone, welcome back, Dom here and in this video I'm going to show you my 6 top favorite Cubase stock plugins for loudness, for making things loud and proud, right after this. So I've been getting this question quite a lot, so I decided to make a video about this. Many of you have been asking me, what are your favorite plugins to make things loud in Cubase? Stock plugins, please, because I just got Cubase and I only have the stock plugins. And I really enjoy it when you give me ideas in the comments down below. Sometimes it results in videos like this. And I want to talk about today's sponsor of this video. And the sponsor is you. Thank you so much for being with me for such a long time. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for all the love in the comments, for the emails. You're keeping this channel alive. Let's get into my favorite plugins for loudness. And the first one is, I think, an unsung hero in Cubase. And this is the multiband compressor. Now, this is a plugin that immediately gives you a very nice polished sound and it's very easy to use because it has auto gain. It's very easy to get to a louder perceived volume with your tracks. All of the plugins that I'm going to show you here today are capable of giving you quite a bit of loudness, but you have to know how to use them right. Let's start with the multiband compressor. I'm going to play this little track here and let's turn it on. So you can hear there's not like a massive raise in volume, but the perceived loudness is much, much higher. So this is one of the plugins that reminds me of the finalizer, the TC finalizer. It, this kind of sound that you would get from the finalizer when you would turn it on, it had this kind of multiband compression. It was three bands and it would get things really loud. And it was pretty much the first processor that introduced mastering to the masses. Very, very powerful device, but you had to know how to use it right because things could go <laughs> sideways and you could get some really, really distorted masters like this. But the main thing that it could do was to give you more presence, give you a little bit more loudness immediately when you turn it on. And this is what the multiband compressor does in Cubase, in my opinion. This is the first layer that I would use to make things pumped up, you know, get a mix sound more exciting, especially if you're looking for a quick master. Let's go for the next plugin in line, which is, of course, the Squasher. And in this case, I'm using a really, really aggressive preset that I've created. This is called Dom Massive Master, and you'll see why I call it this way. I've done a dedicated video for Squasher, so make sure you check it out if you want to learn what you can do with this amazing plugin. So let's play without the Squasher first. I mean, the difference is pretty massive here. And, you know, I would use Squasher for more aggressive music genres like EDM or like uh, very, very aggressive electronic music, rock, metal. It works great with all these things. It gives you a lot of color, a lot of aggression, a lot of in-your-face sound. I wouldn't use it for jazz. I wouldn't use it for anything that's like delicate because it has this upward compression that can make things super pumped up. 
So again, it's one of those plugins that can give you a very, very powerful sound, but you have to be very careful on how to use it, especially if you use it on the master bus. But in some cases, it might just be the right recipe. The next plugin that I use for loudness and especially for perceived loudness is Quadrophase 2. And this is a multiband saturator, tape emulation, tube emulation, so it can give you lots of different colors. And because it's multiband, that means that you can say, okay, I want to saturate just my low end or maybe just my mid range where the vocals live and leave my low end alone so that you don't make your low end dirty. But sometimes I like to use the tape emulation on all bands in different amounts and add a little bit of width to make things wide. And this gives me quite a bit of perceived loudness. So let's try it. And in this case, I'm not level matching. The reason why I'm not level matching is I'm using these processors to add a little bit of gain using saturation or any color that every processor can give me, like the squasher gives me the upward compressor, you know? So the strategy is to add a little bit of gain in stages, you know, just tiny amounts of gain until you get to your limiter. This is how you can approach your processing if you want to get to a louder master, you know? So basically you treat it like cooking, you know, you add every little ingredient and then you end up, you know, in the final recipe, you reach your limiter just to add the final stages of limiting, pick limiting, clipping and all these things. So again, I've done quite a few videos about all these plugins. Feel free to check them out because I go into more detail about how you can use each plugin. But with the quadrophase, you can basically start with the initial preset and start adding a little bit of drive to each band. And this gain increase is quality gain increase. You can of course level match, but if you know what you're doing, you don't necessarily need to level match, especially if you're done your gain staging right, which I show you in this video. Let's move on to the next plugin. And the next plugin is a beautiful plugin and it's Magneto, right? This plugin can really give you a little bit of oomph, a little bit of a tape sound to your masters. So let's have a listen and I'm going to turn it on. This of course comes from the tape compression, the tape saturation that this plugin can do so well. Sometimes I just use a tiny bit of Magneto just to get this really nice flavor that this plugin gives me. But again, it contributes to a perceived loudness. It contributes to a more alive and breathing mix. Now let's move on to another plugin that again, I think it's an unsung hero and this is the Soft Clipper. Now this plugin I would use the way I would kind of overload and clip a good quality converter. It's the sweet spot that you have to find. You know, if you overdo it, it's going to sound really bad. It's going to sound distorted. But if you just find the right spot, then this plugin can give you very good amount of loudness and of course perceived loudness as well. So treat it like that. Treat it like you would overload a really high quality converter and you will see what this can do. Let me give you an example in this case. I'm going to drive it with the input and then I'm going to add the second and third harmonics. Let me go too far.
hear what it adds to the sound? It gives you this kind of clip converter kind of sound that so many mastering engineers use. This is like a trick of the industry, you know, you can drive a converter to get this kind of pushed sound but without sounding too limited, without sounding squashed. You know, no matter how much I drive this, it's not going to give me this over limited, over compressed sound. Of course, it gets into distortion territory, but that's a completely different thing. And that might be something that's desirable for the kind of music you're creating. If you're going for a very aggressive sound, if you're going for a very push sound, this might just be the recipe for you. See, it is distorted, but it's not compressed. It doesn't sound like, oh yeah, I'm losing all the transients. It sounds super limited. It doesn't sound like that. So if you find the right spot where in my case, I would probably go very, very mild, but to the point where I would get the sound I'm looking for. So let's have a listen. So Soft Clipper, did you know about this plugin? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you didn't know it, maybe it's time to try it. So what I would probably use is the Soft Clipper followed by the Maximizer, which is the next plugin that I have in the list. And this again is a really, really nice plugin when you want to get things a tad louder. Now, I wouldn't just slap the maximizer on my master bus and call it a day. I would probably go with a chain leading to the maximizer. And that's why I said I don't level match every single time. Because what I want to do is I want to give a little bit of boost in each state to reach the maximizer and drive it as much as I need to drive it. So I get this good sound out of this plugin. If you level match all the way, sometimes you are becoming counterproductive, okay? So you tend to kind of go like, okay, let's level match. And the level never changes. When you get to your limiter, you will have to boost your level somehow. And then you will have to drive it with like a fader or like an output level or something like this. You don't need to do all that. This is all about experience. If you know how to drive your plugins in order to get to your limiter, then you'll be fine. The most important thing is game staging. Don't go too hard on your first stage. So as you can see, basically I'm driving my first plugin around minus 12, okay? So I have a lot of headroom to play with and add all these different colors and I don't have to level match to do this. Now, one thing that I would say for the maximizer is I almost always use the modern algorithm. I think it sounds way, way better than the classic one and it can give you a more transparent, open sound while retaining the transients. The classic algorithm is very interesting, but I use it for other things, maybe a topic for a different video. So I always keep it at modern. I have my output at minus one. I tend to have soft clip on if I haven't used a soft clipper before. And then what I'm doing is I'm trying to play with the recover I would suggest you don't go too high with your recover because then you're going to get some artifacts. Try and play with it so that you can get a feel of how it sounds and how it reacts with your track because this is completely material dependent, right? So I cannot give you a specific value there, but I tend to start at 50% and go anti-clockwise, especially if I have a lower pace track, maybe I'm gonna go a little bit lower with the recover, but too much and you're going to get a very, very fast recovery and it's going to sound weird on a master bus. Let's have a listen. So what I have here is I have the multiband compressor and the soft clipper, okay? And now what I'm going to do is add just a final touch with the maximizer. I'm not going to go in super limit, super compressed with it, okay? Let's have a listen. Clipper first.
So, I mean, you can push it hard. You can really push it hard, but you don't have to. If you do your gain staging right, and if you add the right color with every plugin, and you're careful that you don't overload any plugin in your mastering chain, you'll be fine. And basically, the maximizer is my last stage. I add two to three dBs of limiting there to give the track a little bit more oomph. But when you add all these plugins that I showed you today, I didn't use all of them at once because it would be over the top. It would be so, so, so loud. But if you use all of these plugins and add a little bit of flavor, then you will get to the maximizer and the maximizer will not have to work so hard. So multiband compressor, immediate polished sound, on your master bus. Squasher, if you want to get very aggressive, very, very loud. Quadrafuzz, if you want to get this multiband tape saturation, tube saturation, then Magneto gives you this nice tape compression and saturation. Soft Clipper can give you this clipped converter sound inside Cubase. And trust me, you need a lot of money to be able to do this with a good converter. And Maximizer is the icing on the cake. This gives you the last couple or three dBs of loudness. You can of course push it very hard, but I would suggest that you build your chain up to this point until you get to your maximizer. And again, these are very quick examples. If you want me to do more videos on mastering, let me know in the comments down below. If I get enough comments, enough requests about this, I might make more videos about mastering. So let me know if you're interested about this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope that now, you know which plugins to use in Cubase to make things loud and proud. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you so much, my friends. Bye.